there was a cold front coming and we hoped it would hold off just a few more days so we could get in a kayak adventure on the San Juan River in Bluff, Utah. But first we needed to find a spot for one night before a reservation we had for Snow Canyon State Park. We found a camping spot for the night in a casino, but we have a great view of the mountains and there looks like we can walk around here. While we wait for our site to open up, we are going to go for a bike ride. And boy, is Snow Canyon gorgeous. And it's a gorgeous day. Oh, couldn't be better. Temperature's perfect. Lots of e-bikes here. <laughs> okay, let me sweep this out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I nailed him. We arrived early because we'd been told that the bike riding was great. And it was. John just spotted a tarantula. Oh, it's tiny. Like there's a short little hike over here so we're gonna lock up the bikes and check it out oh. nature made steps there are basically two bike trails in the park one is paved and it's you know a narrower traditional kind of bike trail and then there is the gravel road and I think they're both about four miles long and they're both worth it. The paved path goes all the way down into town. The small campground has hookups, a dump station, showers, and a group area that would be perfect for a camper van gathering. Today we're heading off toward Bluff, Utah. Got a long drive day, but we have a kayak, a kayak adventure scheduled for tomorrow. Hoping that our timing is good because Tuesday is supposed to be awful <laughs> weather-wise. Going to be cold, wet, and uh, hopefully we'll miss that. But Snow Canyon is a great campground, very small though. Now we were camp smooshed together with other people because we got a last minute spot, but they have some beautiful campsites around here. I think there are like 27 campsites. There are two group sites. So if you have a group, you might want to schedule. One of the group sites actually has a, some electric, which would be awesome. The other one is basically tent only. And there are showers. Dogs are allowed in the park 
but there are some trails that they're not allowed on. They're allowed on the paved trail and on the gravel road that we rode on, but on the other kind of single track trails, they're not allowed. I don't know if that's a winter towing truck or not, but it might be. So I recognize the guys. I think I recognize the guy driving. Driving down 89, we just found a nice little hike called Toadstools. Well, it's the Toadstools Trailhead. It's one just over a mile and uh, we're gonna go check it out. That lady had on like ballet slippers. <laughs> like Winnie the Pooh resting against a tree trunk. Is that one of the three stooges that does that? Okay, that was a great spot to stop and stretch our legs. Correction, we went two miles round trip. Technically to the end it's 1.6 round trip, but we did it a little bit extra. People often ask me, what is the weather going to be like in Utah in October? And this is a perfect example of how you cannot predict the weather here. Last year at this time, it was really warm. And this week, it has cooled off significantly. Today is October 10. And it is supposed to be nice tomorrow, which is lucky because we have a rafting adventure or something like that tomorrow. The next day it's supposed to be rainy and cold and it gets colder throughout the week. So it's down into the into the mid to low 20s for the entire week. So we've been kind of scrambling around. We have two nights at this RV park because of the rafting uh, trip. And we've been scrambling around trying to find a place that's going to be warmer for the rest of the week. And the warmest we could find was actually in the Monument Valley area. So I have just made a reservation because uh, we're going to want to have power most likely. It could get into the mid to low 20s, maybe, maybe not. Uh, the weather's so unpre unpredictable, we'll just check back all the time with the weather. Anyway, you cannot predict it. So you have to bring a wide range of clothing and, uh, and we'll see how it goes as far as winterizing. That's what we don't want to do but we will if we have to. I think I've said before that I allow myself one gadget per trip. This time I brought my Nutribullet because I have a hard time sometimes eating enough protein and I have a protein mix that I really like. It's made by, who is this? It's Isoline. They have a new one that has the 
it, it's a, oh, it's a whey based shake and it has greens in it or something but it's chocolate and i love this stuff so i'm going to make myself a protein shake for dinner because john ate at the burger king and the reason we stopped there is because I wanted to see what their display of uh, Code Talkers uh, stuff was. Uh, the, the owner of that Burger King has some displays about the Navajo Code talk Talkers. And that whole story is so fascinating. I wanted to check it out while we were in Cayenta. And the interesting thing about Cayenta is that John and I went through there on our honeymoon in 1975 in a 1967 Volkswagen Squareback, no air conditioning, and we broke down in Cayenta. And in, that, in those days, there were four gas stations and a Holiday Inn, and that's it, nothing else. Uh, we needed a fuel pump, and uh, just what happens, that car had belonged to my older brother, Dave, whom you've met, and Dave left a fuel pump in the trunk of the car. So we had the, we had the fuel pump, but we had to find someone with metric tools and we were able to chase somebody down in a dune buggy and he loaned us his metric tools. We changed out the fuel pump and we were on our way. And so Cayenta kind of holds a sweet spot for us. The one thing I did plan for on this trip was to sign up for a one day kayak adventure that also included a tour of some of the local archeology span sites. Say, take me on a treasure hunt. I long for something new. We didn't say which way to go, so I'm going this way. It's like a rock. Shit. When I close my eyes, adapt for the rock. Uh-oh. Uh. Wait for that. that oh boy. No oh boy. <laughs> Man, you gotta come in high. Or <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh. Thank you. Later it comes later, dear. off this table, Dave, and, and below the tablecloth was a roller table. We'll be going through a wash. There's going to be some tamarisk uh, branches on the sides. They'll try to get you, swipe you, so just be aware for those of you that are on the side. the last time it would have been inhabited and how it got its snake name is just because of the huge snake pictograph on top.
morning. We are in Bluff, Utah still after a really great kayak trip and today we're going to go on to Blanding which is not too far from here to see a uh, there's a museum there that's supposed to have like a world-class collection of pottery from the from <laughs> I always screw the Pueblo and from the Pueblo and period and we're gonna then go on to a KOA over by Monument Valley because the weather, I don't know if you can see that, it's rather stormy outside and cold. And we kind of Googled around and figured that the weather will be a little bit warmer in Monument Valley. And we're looking for something that keeps the outside temperatures at night kind of around the freezing, maybe high 20s, so we don't have to worry about winterizing. So that's the plan for today and also uh, because I need to video, edit video and so we will park at the KOA for a couple days so I can get the next video uploaded. Why are you doing that, John? The sun is hitting your jaw. You look a little <laughs> bit like Jack Nicholson and the Joker. <laughs> Not there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> okay, thanks. Where does she get those wonderful toys? <laughs> got our little heater going down here. Just taking the edge off. It doesn't heat the van, it just takes the edge off. <laughs> kind of like a dry martini. <laughs> this was not expected, but you should expect anything in Utah. It's snowing. So we're gonna go into the edge of the Cedars State Park Museum and uh, try to stay warm. Oh boy, where are we going? <laughs> was one of the coolest, wasn't it? Yes. That was a great, great, uh, I don't know, what do you call that? Museum. <laughs> no. Just a thought. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to, she said, the cultural woman. Cultural interface. There you go. Yeah, it was a great cultural interface. Now we're going to go check out the dinosaur museum, which she said is a lot of fun. So yeah, they close it too, so we better hurry. A soup day here. It's cold. And while John puts the bikes under a cover, 
I'm going to get the beans starting to soak so we can have them for dinner. One huge ammonite. 